Welcome everybody to the first ever Perpetual Protocol community call. We're really glad to have you here. It looks like there's quite a few participants. That's really great. So thanks a lot for coming. Uh, but the things we'd like to cover are the latest updates that we have to share. And as well, we'll have cover the protocol stats and give you a quick introduction to the team. Uh, and yeah, finally, we'll end with the Q&A. All right, so. So first thing is that we have been like, so the protocol has been launched like more than a month. And then I think the volume is like, is quite good. I mean, like people trading here. So um, most of the thing that we are focused on is we want to launch more market. I mean, more market um, uh, that's definitely bring in more trading volume and also bring in more users. So that's uh, definitely our focus for the next few weeks. Um, so we have a governance uh, voting like, per week. So that's what we are doing right now. So we vote for one market per week. We probably will increase this frequency. Uh, I mean, I make it more frequent uh, in the following weeks. So that's the first thing. The other thing that uh, lots of people in the community are asking for is the, uh, the, the, the hardware wallet integration. This is uh, kind of like hard to us. Actually, we spend lots of time on this, but uh, I think it's not perfect yet. But anyway, we have Ledger supported now. So if you have a Ledger wallet, you can connect and then we, um, you cannot use the MakerMask API, unfortunately, because um, MakerMask, uh, they actually, I mean, like, I mean, like how we wallet on MakerMask actually doesn't support all the features. So that's why uh, we are, uh, we have this like native, like uh, connect, connection to the Ledger wallet. It's harder to, to build the same thing on the treasure. So um, we are also working on another website that uh, you know, let you connect to XDAC directly. So you can use all the hardware wallet without problem. Yeah. So that's also um, the thing that we were working on. Yeah, so UI improvement. So we have, I mean, um, like also like some people from community ask for the liquidation price. So right now you can see the liquidation price before you open or close the position. So I think that's good. Also, we have been, I, I mean, we have some problem like performance problem. Um, I think like two or three weeks ago uh, when the market like go crazy, I mean, <laughs> the UI sold down a lot. Um, we, I think we spent some time like fixing. So right now I think it should perform well. If any of you like found is still like not performing well, or like you, you see a lot of lag, uh, please let us know. And then we can, I mean, like try to look at like what's the issue there. For the next few weeks, I think there are uh, lots of things in the pipeline. The first thing that we are, I mean, like we're currently working on is the transaction mining. Um, so, uh, so, so it's just like trading incentive. So we want to reward the traders that uh, who, um, I mean, who place orders on our exchange. Um, they are, uh, I mean, like we will have a more detailed, I mean, uh, like proposal, I mean, posted it on the governance forum, I think in a, uh, in a few days. Yeah, but uh, I think the concept is that uh, we want to, I mean, like uh, launch this campaign and then have more users, I mean, trading on our platform. So that's just the simple goal. And then we want to more ahead, I mean, from our competitors or like other protocol that uh, providing the same feature. Um, we also have the reward UI. So rewards is, uh, is actually complying with the transaction mining and also staking rewards. We don't have negative uh, staking right now. So after the transaction mining, we will start, I mean, letting people to stake their prep token using this UI, and then they can earn, I mean, uh, I mean, 50%, I think that's the, the number we will, I mean, set when we launch. So they will earn 50% of the transaction fees. So that's also something we are very looking forward. SDI UI is the, 
is actually, um, I mean, right now we have this like hybrid uh, um, structure, I mean, architecture. So you're actually using the ETH mainnet, but uh, we kind of like we sign the transaction on ETH mainnet and then send the transaction to XSky and then execute on XSky. But there are some like issues like how we're, well, the issues that I mentioned before. So having an XSky UI actually help with all like different kinds of like, wallet connect, how we wallet, all these different kinds of connection. So that's something we are also working on as well. Um, we actually just passed uh, one of the audit from Petro. So we will update the audit reports in our website, in our document website. So you can take a look. So just on, um, so we've, we've currently got two kind of programs that are running uh, kind of simultaneously. So the first one is kind of our dev grant program. Um, and the idea really here is that anyone can uh, pitch to the team and anyone that kind of has an idea can uh, can build on Perpetual. Um, and, and this is quite a simple process. You kind of apply and go through that. The second one is kind of the bounty program, which you see here. Um, the bounty program is, uh, is a more targeted one where um, the team has basically figured out kind of key things that the community are, are constantly asking for, but um, we may not necessarily have bandwidth or, or the capability to kind of build it. Uh, and so we wanna involve the community a lot more in terms of building. So we, we currently have, uh, I, I can say four uh, that have, we've just started. Um, so there's the limit order functionality, which I believe a lot of you guys um, have been asking for. Uh, the design of this is going to be fully um, fully on chain, so there's going to be no centralized services. Uh, the second is is a leveraged token. Um, the leveraged token, the idea around here is uh, to bring uh, uh, the, the token back into an ERC20 token, so it's composable with Ethereum. Um, the third one is a CoinGecko exchange API, so we're working on getting uh, listed on CoinGecko as a DEX. Um, and as part of that, we kind of need a, uh, an API. So there's a team building that. And then lastly is, is actually a uh, subgraph and a dashboard. Um, so similar to kind of like the Dune analytics or the Redash dashboards that you guys have been seeing, um, but something probably more branded and something that you can uh, access a lot easier. So those are the, the four kind of uh, main uh, bounties and dev grants that, that, that are currently active. Um, just some very quick kind of uh, stats, I guess. So as, as I'm sure you've, you've all seen, we're, we're, we're very close to kind of the billion dollar traded volume mark. Um, today, we've kind of had 430 odd testing traders and we've, we've done kind of over 322K uh, number of trades. Um, this one was kind of a, an interesting one and it just kind of reinforces the point that Yenwen was making. Um, this graph basically kind of shows traders that only trade a particular market. Um, this was, I think it was taken a couple of days ago, so before the SNX, but you can basically say, see that whenever there's kind of a new market that's launched, um, we actually capture kind of new users based on that. So, and this is kind of why we're trying to push for a lot more new markets because the more new markets we get, the more kind of users that we get. Uh, and then the last one that I wanted to share is, is probably the, the weekly retention stats. Um, Again, all of these stats are kind of in June, um, which we can share, uh, but based on kind of weekly cohorts, uh, we've had a significantly higher kind of retention than, than, than we've been expecting. Like we've been expecting probably like in the five to 10%, but we're kind of looking at kind of like the 25 to 30% um, retention to date. Uh, and then the very last point uh, I will make is um, for those of you who haven't seen, there is a uh, $1 billion trading volume, a little prize, basically uh, the trader that kind of gets us across that, across the line and, and into it, uh, will win 333 perp. Um, and then the second thing I wanted to point out, and I, and I believe some of you guys didn't actually know about this, but there's the URL here, which is reward.perp.fi. Um, for those of you who are holding tokens, uh, you can stake them right now via the balancer pool. Uh, and then take that BPT and stake it into that uh, reward contract. Uh, and I believe the last time I checked, the APY was somewhere in kind of like the hundred odd percent. Um, I do know that some of you personally have, have reached out and you didn't know about it. So we just put it here just in case you didn't know about it. All right, thanks for that, Nick.
Uh, so in the next section, we will give a quick introduction to our team. As you can see, the team actually is uh, quite quite a few people and getting bigger. Uh, I think probably most most of you know already our founder, uh, Yin Wan, who's with us on the call today, and uh, our other co-founder, Sao, who is uh, uh, more in charge of the development aspects of the of the project, whereas Yin Wan will be more uh, looking at like the development of the project and communicating with uh, investors and other, other uh, key players in the industry. Uh, the next uh, person to see is Yu Ren. He's the uh, head of our developer team. And uh, the, all these people in blue here are part of our development team. So uh, most of the team members are involved in development, uh, whether it's the smart contract with Kimi and Shaoku or our back end and server uh, development with the D2, Chunwen, uh, and Vinta. And finally, uh, probably most important to a lot of you is the people doing the front end and they work really hard to um, keep the front end working smoothly and bringing uh, continuous updates to the front end to make it easier to use. On the, in the green section here is the marketing and uh, sort of people doing other, other tasks. Um, Nick, who you just heard on the call, helps us a lot with the product development and partnerships as well has been really active recently with the governance aspects of the project. Daniel, most of you uh, haven't heard of, he's our financial engineer and helps us uh, with all kinds of strategy and other, other aspects of the project. I'm myself and I'm um, working in the marketing team and uh, Xing is our, another person on our marketing team who's right beside me. Wei Ting also helps a lot with marketing but also does uh, outreach to other projects and looks for ways to help us grow. We recently have a new, a new guy on board, Nikor, who's our uh, man in China, helping us with the development in the Chinese market. And that's looking really interesting. He's doing a great job. And uh, our latest, uh, latest team member to join is uh, our designer, Leo, who is uh, helping us improve a lot of things related to our design. And uh, I think all of you will be seeing a lot of interesting new developments in the design front coming soon. You can already see our Twitter has some updated graphics, so that's really great. All right, so we'll move on to the Q&A. And yeah, so anybody, uh, if you have questions, please type it into the chat. Okay, so we have a question from Christian. Thanks a lot. It says, will staking be perp only or will it be with a pool? Yeah, I, I can take that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, so uh, right now it's for perp only. It will not be with a pool. Um, we actually think about like uh, a pool design, but the uh, impermanent loss actually is um, is something that uh, we abandon that design. I I don't maybe in the future we will we might do this, but uh, at least for now it will be perp only. We do have a plan that we should add more asset other than perp in our staking program, but uh, I mean like for at least right now it's only perp. All right, so we have a second question from uh, Che Pianta. Do you have a time frame to go live for transaction mining? Uh, Tempo or Nick? Yeah, okay, Tempo, go ahead. <laughs> sure, uh, yeah, that's a good question. So <laughs> I think we got this question a lot. Um, transaction mining, I will, I mean, like that's the main focus right now. So hopefully we can launch it soon. Um, I'm really sorry that we don't really give out, uh, I mean, like kind of like fixed date for this because um, I think we are actually running on a fight, very tight schedule right now. So it's, I mean, um, it's really hard to like give out a prediction. And then um, actually we tried this like uh, before, I mean, like uh, maybe a month since before, but uh, I think that we, you know, it, it, there is always delayed and then I mean, like, we just don't want to like disappoint the people. I mean, like, we want to wait for that um, the product is ready, at least from our point of view that uh, it doesn't really have any problem. So I'm sorry for this, but um, the transaction mining will be soon. And uh, for fall, that will be the staking. Okay, great. Uh, we have another question, which is, will there be another trading competition from Michael? Yes, there will definitely be more trading competitions. Uh, 
we actually plan to to have more uh, already, but we are just busy with all kinds of things. But this is definitely on the on the schedule and should be coming up. And now that you've asked about it, you sort of reminded us like, oh yeah, we need to do that. So very soon. Uh, the next question we have from Snow Sledge is a great name, by the way. Uh, what is the estimated allocation of rewards for transaction mining and staking? Um, maybe Nick, do you want to mention our recent the governance thing? Yeah, sure. Um, we we don't have a a fixed uh, amount currently. So if 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 you're interested, we have just posted a governance proposal in the forums to unlock uh, a, a bunch of basically perpetual tokens that have been locked previously um, so that we can use it for these rewards. Um, as part of that uh, ask, um, we've, we've allocated, or at least we've asked for 13 million in terms of perp, uh, perp tokens for rewards in general. Um, and, uh, and an allocation or a portion of that will be um, towards transaction mining. Uh, but in regards to like the actual fixed amount for transaction mining, we don't we don't have that yet. Um, just simply because the plan is really to to run something, test it, see if it works, um, and then scale it up from there. So uh, we don't want to overspend and we don't want to underspend. So th there's no firm number right now. I think we will be running sort of like a weekly cap of rewards. I don't know if uh, Yen Wen, do you want to mention something more about that? Yes, um, there will be like a cap weekly. I mean, well, that's, um, I mean, like we want to gradually increase that cap. So, I mean, like we don't really like overspend the rewards. Yeah, I think our goal is like, so, I mean, this is uh, the whole transaction mining. Our goal is um, we want to 10X our transaction volume. So I think there is a balance. I mean, of course we need to give our rewards to in I mean, like to let people interested in the project, but at the same time, we don't really want to overspend that rewards because we only have a fixed amount of those rewards. So, um, uh, so anyway, I, I mean, like we will have a cap, we will gradually increase that and then see if we can just like bump up the transaction volume and also like attract more and more users. Okay, great. And uh, Christian asked a second question, when will perp staking go live? <laughs> so I think as, as Yen Wen mentioned a little bit earlier, like we, we'd love to promise you a date that we can, we can have this go live, but it's basically a matter of like, when can we develop it and be happy with the, the product? And we're, we're confident that we can, you know, deliver a really great product. So our goal is to definitely have that starting in Q1 of this year, but yeah, we can't really make a, a fixed, give a fixed date at this time. Okay, we have another follow-up question from Snow Sledge. Uh, will you be working with Delphi Digital to audit the economics of PERP? Uh, for example, in terms of allocation? Yeah, I can take that. Uh, that's an interesting question. We, uh, we're actually working with Delphi Digital on an other project. So uh, we are working with them on a new design to launch permissionless market. So that's actually the things we are working with them right now. Uh, we didn't really think about like, I mean, working with them on economics. Uh, maybe we should, I mean, like, uh, I, I don't really know. I, I, will, I, I will contact with them and then think about this. Location wise, I think it's probably too late to change anything. I mean, like, uh, because we already have that, uh, I mean, at that post, I mean, like last year, so, uh, Mostly we just follow that plan. Uh, we want to be adaptive to use the reward. That's the other thing that uh, for the reward we give out, I mean, like we want to, I mean, try a, a cap. I mean, like I said, we try, try a smaller cap first and then gradually increase that. That we definitely do. But uh, for the whole allocation, I don't think it's easier to change that. And then I, yeah, so I think we will just uh, stick with what we have right now. Okay, uh, we're gonna move on. We actually have a bunch of questions that came from our Discord community and Telegram communities that we're not able to join the call live today. So uh, I will read out some of these. Uh, the first one we have is from Bull Whale 22 another great name. What is the fundamental bottleneck of not adding new pairs quicker? Uh, so 
right now our sort of goal is like one new pair per week. So he's wondering like, why aren't we adding these more quickly? Yeah, uh, I can take that as well. Okay, uh, that's a great question. Uh, we should be able to, uh, but there are several bottleneck. The first thing is that the channeling uh, oracles. Um, so uh, right now, I mean like, the, so we have this boat like sushi. Um, they don't really have a pair for sushi USD right now. So we have to wait for them and then to launch, uh, I mean to, I guess, um, give us that uh, data feed. So that's one bottleneck we have. The second thing is that, um, so uh, launching a new market, there are actually several pieces of like uh, software that have to work together. Uh, I mean, we just launched like uh, more than a month, but we don't really have this fully automated. And actually it's really hard. I mean, uh, because they are different parts of, uh, of the components. So we probably need like one person or two person work on like probably like two or three hours. And then, you know, deploy a, a new contract, make sure it's working, it's the, you know, it doesn't have any problem. And then we deploy another set of contracts and then do the same thing, verify that. So it actually takes time. And when the gas price is high I mean, or like, you know, there are delays. So it's the reason that it takes some time to do this. We are, I mean, like we, we I mean, right now we have a, a one person like working on like streamlining it, but um, I mean, right now our goal is like one market per week. And then once we switch, I mean, I streamline that, that, then we should be able to launch market faster. Yeah, hope this uh, answers the question. Right, the next question from our Discord user, a uh, very active Discord user. I'm sure you've all seen this guy around, MK001. Thanks so much for your, uh, all your great questions. So the question that we're going to take from him is, do you consider moving to an, another L2 solution like Loopring? Um, me? <laughs> okay. No. Uh, we, we are not considering moving to, I mean, Loopring. Uh, it's, I mean, like this is uh, the VK grow up. So there are different kinds of L2 technology. So Zoopling is VK grow up. It's actually harder. I mean, like they have their own language. We have to make a lot of change. So I don't think in the short time, which we can do that. And uh, right now, actually, I'm, I'm actually, um, I mean, I'm very sacrificed with uh, SDI. I mean, like it performs well. Although there are sometimes the API endpoint, like, um, I, I mean, like uh, yesterday or the day before, it has problem, but uh, I think, I mean, in general, it, it actually helps a lot and then it, it works very well. So I think we will stay with SDI for a while until like um, other like L2 solution that, uh, you know, really gets getting traction. So yeah, that's it. And maybe I can just quickly add for sure in the long term, we will be keeping our eye on other L2 projects. So, uh, but it's not something that we're really thinking about right now. All right, uh, next we have a question from Telegram member Explorer. Uh, I've heard that perp fees are really low thanks to XDAI sister chain or side chain, but can we say that it's cheaper than trading on a centralized exchange? <laughs> it's a pretty interesting question. I can, I can take this one. Yeah, go ahead. Um, the answer really is it depends. Uh, depends on the exchange, depends if you're a taker, depends if you're a maker, um, depends if you get front run on, on a centralized exchange of which you pretty much normally will. Um, but uh, to, to answer it, the, the fees that we have right now is 0.1% that's been set. And obviously on, on kind of like the larger ones, like your Binance and your BitMEX, it's probably at like a 0.025%. Um, so from that perspective, yes, um, but that's kind of where the transaction mining then steps in. So uh, you, you can almost think of transaction mining as a, a maker rebate where um, your, your fee basically gets subsidized. So the, the, the gas fee is already, the gas fee on XDAI is already paid for by Perpetual. So uh, effectively, uh, as transaction mining goes live, you're basically not paying fees. All right, thanks a lot for that, Nick. Uh, our next question comes from Discord, uh, Discord user called Lee. I promise it's not me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the question is, what are your thoughts on how you're planning uh, to dynamically set K 
so he's talking about the constant product formula used in our VAMMs. Uh, and he's wondering if there's a way that can be, if we can set it so that it cannot be front run. This is a fairly technical question. I don't know if, uh, yeah, one, do you want to take that? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, yeah, this is, uh, I don't think, um, this is hard, uh, hard questions. Um, yes, I, I think um, this is really hard to, I mean, so basically, um, we actually have different designs of like how we can dynamically set the K. So um, in order to be, I mean, to not be found rounded, uh, I think um, we choose a design that we will, I mean, like gradually increase or decrease K by block, so per block. So it's really hard for people to found on that because we kind of like, um, I mean, spread all the, I mean, like all the change into like different blocks. So that's how we re react to this. Um, we will have a more detailed write up on this, uh, but we, I mean, like this is still in audit right now. So uh, we will have a, I mean, like detailed post later. Yeah. There is also like uh, one person, like, um, I mean, uh, Daniel. Daniel has, has the question. So I also want to ask, answer this one. So. Um, so I think yeah, there are actually several parts. So I think the first thing is that, so what's the main objective for Q1 to Q2? So that, I mean, like um, the next like six months. Yeah, this is, this is a great question. So um, for us, I think the market share, I mean, we want to grab as, as much market share as possible. Yeah. Um, um, we, I think we are one of the several that um, um, Perpetual Protocol launched right now. And I think we are the leading one. So in order to like, um, I mean like a boost, I mean boost, at least, I mean, we only have like, like five market right now. So actually we have a lot of room to grow. So I think for this like two quarter or for this six months, we really want to grow to, so right now we have like daily transaction volume between like 30 to 40 million. I think we should be able to 10X that. So if we can do that, we actually can be like top three decks, including, I mean, like include all the decks. I mean, like Uniswap or SushiSwap. So I think that's a goal. I mean, like we want to uh, make sure we are at that place first. And then we can, I mean, like, um, of course, at the same time, we have different kinds of improvement, but that's really our goal right now. And um, the stable coin, yeah, I think that's really, I mean, good like proposal that, uh, you know, lots of people in the community talking about this. Um, I think that will be a later, I mean, like a feature that we probably ha will have a bounty for that or, or we would work on that as well. But uh, I think the problem is that we need more transaction volume in order to support a stable coin. I mean, right now we don't really have that. So um, I think we need to have like much larger, I mean, uh, market first. So that's, uh, that's something that probably not our top priority right now. Yeah, so yeah, I think that's it. Okay, thanks for that. Uh, actually, we did notice those questions in the chat and we will get to them. I just wanted to, uh, anyway, we'll, we'll take questions as we get them. Uh, our next question from Discord member Glass of Beer uh, is actually <laughs> targeted at, at the marketing team. He says, are you going to hire somebody to take care of marketing full-time or what's the plan to grow the user base? Uh, I don't see much advertisement of the platform and Twitter is tweeting only one or two days. so. <laughs> I should take responsibility for this. Actually, I am working full time as a marketing marketing team, and we have we have also Xing who is full time working on marketing. So clearly, <laughs> we have to up our game a little bit. And uh, yeah, thanks. It's some good constructive criticism. Uh, in the last sort of week, I think we've been tweeting on Twitter a little bit more than usual. Um, another sort of maybe justification I might give in my defense is. Uh, we spend a lot of time directly talking to community members, both on um, mainly on Discord and as well as direct through direct chat. 
and our comms are open. If you wanna, you know, if you wanna have a chat with me anytime, you can just let me know on Discord, and we can set up a set up a, a time. So also we've uh, spent quite a bit of effort on customer service, uh, making sure that all the users that have issues get get their issues taken care of as quickly as possible. So uh, in the sense that we are still kind of, you know, we're in the first month, month and a half of our, of our uh, after the launch. So we still have a lot of little things to work out, but definitely um, we have grown the team, the marketing team recently, and we will be in, uh, increasing our efforts in this regard. Uh, it'll be a big focus to, in, in the, for the rest of Q1. So thanks a lot for that question. All right, the next question we have comes from ah, Snow Sledge, who's also on the call. <laughs> so a bit of double dipping here, but it's not too bad. Uh, so on Discord, he asked previously, what is the user demographics that the team is targeting right now? Uh, I don't know if uh, maybe Nick, you wanna take this one? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I guess there's, there's kind of, uh, I can tell you to start with the, the the first kind of group that we're probably not targeting currently is more of your like institutional traders. And, and that's probably just because we don't have, even though we are getting to kind of that 1 billion kind of t transaction volume, um, we, we haven't, uh, we don't have enough trading volume yet. So the two that we're probably targeting right now, um, one is obviously uh, retail traders um who who want to go long uh on eth or, or and have leverage on it for example and then the second uh group is probably more around the users who um are potentially come from a hft background or or, or an algorithmic trading background um and is an engineer uh, but they're kind of just doing it by themselves so people who build bots and build things to trade um those are kind of the two that we are targeting um, that said, we do we do know that some of the larger kind of market makers and some of the larger institutional players in the DeFi space have already uh, started building uh, on top of the on top of perpetual even uh, even without us actually asking them they they reached out and they told us which is uh, super exciting. All right, thanks for that, Nick. Our next question comes from a Discord user. Uh, I guess it's Hang F one. Uh, the investors who are getting tokens every two to three months, are you in discussion with them as they will be owning huge amounts of the tokens? Uh, do they plan on L being LPs or staking? And is there any dialogue with those uh, those investors? Maybe I'll pass this one over to Yen Wan. Yeah, sure. Um, so right now we kind of like maintain that um, so the balance of that. So investor owns like one third of all the tokens that are all scanning right now. Um, so I think the question is that uh, um, they will stake. I think that's uh, mostly that, uh, I mean, at least from the, the people we, I mean, from the investor that I have conversation with, I think they want to stake. I think that definitely, something they want. And uh, uh, I think the good thing is that actually a lot of people in the community like question that, you know, when will be the investor dump on us? I think that uh, the good thing is that they don't. I mean, like, um, I think most of them holding the tokens. So I think that's a good sign that, uh, you know, they be believe in the project. So I think we are more in for the long run. I mean, most of our investors, yeah. So, uh, and the other, thing is that uh, you know uh, we i mean we actually have uh i mean some of the investor i mean actually most of the investor are traders so they are trading firms like three arrows like cms holdings so they actually can help i mean like uh, on the trading part so uh cms is actually i mean like um, they are work they, they would they want to trade here so I mean, like they, I mean, like they, they will be like helping us, like try to get the institutional, I mean, traders on board. So I think that's really good as well. Yeah. Or maybe I'll add a little bit here. I think maybe Yen Wan won't be so uh, quick to brag about it, but we really got some great investors for this project. Uh, thanks a lot to Yen Wan and uh, our other founder Sal for this. And uh, actually, a lot of those investors are really they they. Are pretty hands-on they have lots of really good advice and uh, so the dialogue is definitely there the next question comes from 
I'm not sure how to pronounce this name. It's a Discord member, member called ALWT or Alwith. Uh, his question is, there seems to be a deviation in the funding rate. Uh, shorts have been paying longs almost every hour on the ETH and BTC pairs, regardless of volatility and price action. And he thinks this is caused by an up, uh, a delay in the update of the index price. Is there any plan to address this? Um, yeah. Um, so actually, I think uh, I think we have like one engineer take a look at this. I mean, of course, there is a delay on the Oracle. So for Chainlink, I think they delay probably maybe a half minute. I mean, compared to like Binance or FTX. So there's a delay. And because we actually using Chainlink on, L, on layer one, so we need to push the price from layer one to layer two, there might be like three minutes delay, three to five minutes. So you make it like five minutes. But we do, I mean, like we do, we did some calculations on this and uh, we found that uh, it's not really making a lot of difference. I mean, for this delay, because we are using actually TWAP on the funding rate calculation. I think it's more about that we don't really have enough. I mean, it's not enough traders. I mean, uh, most of the traders, uh, I think they go long, but uh, we, I, I think we need more. So the funding rate can be go back to normal. And actually, I think for the, for the last like one or two days, it actually become more like um, neutral right now. Yeah, so I think that's a good thing. All right, we have a question from Jay Unit, who we do see active on Discord too. Welcome, thanks a lot for joining us. He says, hi guys, love the platform. Layer two is the way to go. Will Perp implement a dead man switch for API users on the platform? Uh, I personally don't understand this question. <laughs> do anybody, someone wanna take it or do we wanna follow up from Jay Unit about that? Yeah, I, I, get, I, I get this one. Um, uh, a dead man switch for those that, that aren't uh, aware of it it's it's basically like you you see it in um like bitmax uh and, and kind of like Deribit and kind of like it, the institutional uh exchanges where you basically keep um sending like a heartbeat to the api every i don't know five seconds or something and if if you stop um and you don't send it it's like a dead man switch and then it automatically closes all of the orders for you um just in case it's like catastrophic failure um, in terms of like, I don't know, some infrastructure is down or AWS is down or whatnot. Um, I don't think this is actually possible because we're decentralized, but maybe Yen Wen, you, you have an idea around like the technicalities of, of it. I don't have a quick answer for now. I mean, like, um, uh, yeah, I, I think we need to go through this. I think this is a good suggestion that, uh, you know, we, we, we will, I mean, like add to our backlog and, um, I mean, the king will can discuss about this. Yeah, I think it's good. Yeah, it's definitely. Uh, I mean, I don't know if we can do this right now, but uh, that definitely adds to the backlog. All right, uh, we actually have quite a few more questions from Discord that I don't think we'll address on this call because it's already we're at uh, about the forty-seven minute mark at this point. However, we we do plan to release uh, this recording of this call on YouTube and we'll create a medium post and do our best to summarize all the questions that were that were asked today. So uh, it's been really great having everybody on. Thanks so much for coming. And like I say, thanks again for joining us and uh, have a great day.